I wanted to go through an example of doing a frequency distribution, a histogram and frequency polygon, and a stem and leaf plot for a typical set of data that we might find. The data that I have here is on page 678 in your textbook. It's on checkpoint number 4. It's the bottom of the page. The first thing we need to do for a frequency distribution is make our classes. That is, we want to decide how to break up this data. We need to remember that we need to include the lowest data point and the highest data point. In addition, we have to make sure that our class width is the same for all of our classes. We don't want to have one class containing more data points than the other. We might make exceptions for the first and last class in case, um, for instance, we'd have scores going from 90 to 100 as opposed to 90 to 99, but for the most part everything will be the same width. When I look at this data, I see my lowest value is 41 and my highest value is 99. So I need to have my classes go from at least 41 up to 99. I think what I'll end up doing is go from 40 to 49 50 to 59, and then so on, all the way up to 90 and 99. So these are my classes. My class width, I would just take the 90 minus 80, and it's a width of 10. That is, there are 10 grades that fall into the class from 80 to 89, or 90 to 99, or any of these classes. Now I need to come up with a frequency how many times each one of those data points appear in each of the different categories. And actually before I do the frequency, what I usually do is do a tally column. And what I would do is one by one, I would say 73 and I'd put a tally mark there, 58 and a tally mark there, 68, 75, and you know what? There's got to be a better way of doing this. It's really hard to deal with this when the numbers are all out of an order like this. It would be easier if I could sort the data. Well, let's do that and let's do this using our calculator. So here's my calculator. Most of what I'm going to do for this section is going to deal with the stat button. When I hit the stat button, I see edit, sort A, sort D, and a bunch of other things. First, I'm going to hit edit. What I want to do in L1, that is my list 1, I'm going to put all my data points in there. If there was already data in here, let's put some in just to show you, I don't want that there. So what you do is go all the way up to where it says L1, you hit the clear button, and then enter, and it clears everything out of the column. So let's go ahead and type in one by one each of these data points. All right, I've gone ahead and typed those in. I didn't think you needed to see me go ahead and type in 37 separate numbers. Now that I have it in there, I'm going to quit out of this screen. I want that data list sorted. I want it in order from lowest to highest. So I'm going to go to stat again, and I'm going to go down to number two for sort A. That means sort ascending. And I want it to sort list L1. L1 is over the number one button if you hit second. Second and then one gives you L1. When I hit enter, it just says done. Let's go back and look at my list. Again, stat, edit, and now my list is all in order. And that makes it much easier to do the frequency chart. I see I have one in 40. I have one, two, three, four, five in the 50s and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the tallies from the calculator. And when I go ahead through the calculator and count how many items are in each category or each class, I get 1, 5, 4, 15, 5, and 7. And I double check when that I add that up, I have 37 different items. Again, that's n, the number of items on my list. So if I went up here and counted, I had 37. So I do that to double check. So that's my frequency distribution. Now let's do a histogram. When I'm doing my histogram, my x-axis will always have the classes, and my y-axis will have the frequency. I see I have frequencies from 1 to 15, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure in my y-axis I have space for 0 to 15. For my classes, well, I'm going to write this little 
zigzag symbol here to show that I'm not starting right at zero. I'm skipping ahead to 40 because, to be honest, I don't care about what happens below 40 because I have no data there. So this is 40 to 49, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Well, let's make that a little bit more evenly spaced. So this is 50. Again, this is really 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and this last one is 90 to 99. And I'll write it specifically there so we know that it's all those things in between. So in order to graph this, I notice from 40 to 49, I have one account of one in that. So that would be probably about there. So I went to a height of 1, and I drew a rectangle. The next class goes up to 5. So I write a rectangle right next to the other one, so they're touching. At 60, I only have 4. That's about there. At 70, I go all the way from 70 to 79, that is. I go all the way up to 15. From 80 to 89, I have 5. And lastly, I have seven scores between 90 and 99. And that would be about there. And that's my histogram. If instead of just doing a histogram, I also wanted to do the frequency polygon, I'm going to do this in a different color. All we do is mark the midpoints of each of these rectangles. And then we connect the dots. So I draw a line from there to there, there to there. and so on. And the last dot, I just connect somewhere outside so it touches the x-axis. So the blue line rep represents the frequency polygon. If I went ahead and deleted my rectangles, my histogram, you would see what the frequency polygon looks like by itself. Next we need to do the stem and leaf plot. Again, the stem is going to be our tens place, and our ones place will be our leaf. For instance, our first data point. Well, let's look at our data points again. Let's go to Stat and Edit again. And then there's a list. So our first data point was 441. So we write that as 41. And I know I'm going to go to 41 all the way up to 99. Keep in mind, I need to be careful to don't to not skip any class. So even if I didn't have any grades in the 60s, I need to make sure I list every number, every class from my lowest point, 41, to my highest point, 99. Because if I don't, if I skip it, I'll miss a big gap that I actually do have in my data set. So if I go back to my calculator, I see then I have 50, 52, 57, 58, 58. And I would write that as 50, 52, 57, 58, and 58. And you need to make sure that your, let your digits are about the same size from row to row, so that way you can really make the stem and leaf plot look like what it's supposed to, which is a kind of a histogram on its side. All right, and if I go through all my data, this is what my stem and leaf plot looks like. Again, it sort of looks like the histogram I had on its side. So this is just a quick and easy way, without worrying too much about classes and um, what the graph will look like, it's a quick and easy way to see where most of my da data ends up being. And again, all of this is much easier if you do use your calculator in order to sort the data. And again, to do that, we hit the Stat button, we hit edit then, and under L1, we put all of our data, and then we went back to stat, and then sort, and then sort A, and then we typed in L1, and then our data was then in L1, but in sorted form.